Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, and in the next few videos to come, I would like to talk about giving extra abilities to characters. Uh, characters in, meaning, in this case, both enemies and player characters, although we're going to start with player characters. Um, extra abilities that can make combat more, hopefully more interesting, and that can make characters hopefully more interesting. So here we are at the, uh, the uh, in the combat screen. You can see that it says, you have the initiative, click on an enemy to have bold cypress tree attack them or flee. So that is all the same as it was in the previous video. And if we hover over um, particular if we hover over any enemy or any player character, we'll get a little bit of information, which again is as before, but the information in the case of the player characters is slightly different. Um, this, this character has their name, their armor class, their attack, their damage, but there's a new thing that says critical hit. And if similarly, if we look at this one, it says smoke bombs at the bottom. This one says backstab and this one doesn't have any special um, abilities. So it's now displaying special abilities and each of these three characters has, has one each. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about in particular is smoke bombs today. So uh, as, you can, as I said, we, uh, we have the initiative, we've won the initiative, and we can either um, attack by clicking on one of these enemies or flee by clicking the link and if we click the link um, what has happened thus far uh, at the end of the last video the way that was set up was that all the enemies will get a free attack and in fact they'll get a bonus to hit us um, and then whoever is left alive of the player characters will will get away but if we click on flee this time, we find that we get this message. She is brave, throws a smoke bomb, and you flee the fight. So we don't have to um, we don't have to face that that extra round of being attacked as we run away. We get to run away um, without any penalty, and it's because this particular character has that ability. So let's look at how that's coded. So first of all, we'll look at just setting up the sort of the arrays and stuff to have skills. Um, then I'll probably look at displaying displaying those skills, and then I'll look at um, coding the uh, the smoke bombs special skill in particular. So looking at this page, initialize where we set up all of our variables. I'll just zoom in a bit. We have a new array called SN or dollars SN, which stands for um, skill name, and it's and then it's just a, a text array, which as usual starts with null because I prefer to work from from one with one as the lowest number rather than zero, which is the default for um, for Twine. So we've got null, critical hit, smoke bombs, backstab. Um, that's not in any particular order, and then we have not even alphabetical order now that I look at it. It's just as, as they occurred to me. And all of them, of course, are in, in quotes. Uh, then we have another array, which is dollars $SK, which is just for skills. And it is a three-dimensional array. So what that means is every reference to the dollars $SK array should have three sets of square brackets. Um, the first one will be 0 or 1, and it will indicate whether we're talking about player characters or enemies. The second one will be the number of the individual character within either player characters or enemies. And then the, th the third one will be the um, the number of the skill, the one that correspond which corresponds to this SN array. And if it's a 1, then they have that um, skill, and if it's 0 or undefined or anything else, they, they don't. So, how do we set that up? Well, we set $SK equals square bracket n square bracket. That's just 
sets SK to be a one-dimensional array. Then we set $SK square bracket zero n square bracket equals square bracket n square bracket. So SK zero is an array and we do the same with SK one. So that's now made it two-dimensional. And then we go through $SK square bracket zero n square bracket square bracket one n square bracket and we make it we make that an array which, which adds a third dimension to the arrays um, and then we do the same with sk 0 2 0 3 and 0 4 and each of those arrays again starts with null and then it's a series of ones and zeros so um, play, a, play a character number one has one zero zero which means that they have critical hit they don't have smoke bombs and they don't have backstab and then character two zero one zero character three zero zero one and character four zero 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 um i didn't assign those in any thematic sort of way um what you would probably do is you might have you get you might have particular abilities uh are related to particular character classes. So for example, you might say, well, smoke bombs is something that sort of ninja type characters would get, or perhaps alchemists type of characters, if you have a, an alchemist character class. Backstab is more like something assassins or thieves would have. Um, critical hit, perhaps that would be warriors or, or sort of big characters, ogres or trolls or something like that, if you have those. Um, perhaps they get them automatically, perhaps they have to buy them, you know, perhaps they get a choice of skills, but then smoke bombs is not is only available to sort of wizard and ninja types and so on. Um, I'm just doing the sort of simplest possible example of it, um, where there's no real character creation, there's no choice, we just give character one the first skill, character two the second skill, and character three the third skill. Um, in reality, you probably have a you probably want to have a, a sort of more um, detailed system and a system with 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 a character with a player chooses what their character has or at least um, at least they make choices that affect that. So you might say, well, assassins get a random skill from smoke bombs, backstab, and you know maybe there's a couple of others that are relevant to to them. Um, but as I say, I always set up the sort of simplest, the simplest possible way. So that's how we assign skills. Um, we would do the same for monsters if we were giving them um, skills. I'm going to use skills and special abilities interchangeably. Um, in a lot of role-playing games, skills are one thing, and you know, special abilities might be something else. Um, I'm using the two terms as if they as if they mean the same thing. Um, in, for example, in Dungeons and Dragons Third Edition. Um, these sort of things that are that are you either have them or you don't wouldn't be skills. Um, they'd be uh, now what are they called? In Savage Worlds they're called edges. Um, in Third Edition they're called something else I can't remember. And then skills are a second category of thing. But I'm just I'm using those terms loosely, um, and, and I'm just treating skill and special ability as if it sort of meant the same thing. Um, okay, so we've assigned the skills. Now we want to let the, you know, remind the player who has what skills. Well, that's all done in. Uh, well, it's sort of it's done in the display uh, page, but it's actually done because the display page doesn't include to hover text, so the code's actually here. Um, so. We are generating a variable dollars x, and that's the that's a string, which is the um, all of the information that gets printed out. Um, you might remember that we can't normally when we want to indicate a line break, we do this: we do less than br greater than. That doesn't work in this case. We have to do this um, this ampersand um, hash one three. Um, the, the bit that's relevant is is this bit here, which is which is um, we've already added to X the armor class, the attack, the damage, 
and the name of the character. So now we do a for loop that goes from 1 to sn.length minus 1, which is the number of um, entries that are in um, the sn array other than the null one at the beginning. So in other words, however many skills there are, because sn is the names of skill names. And if dollars sk square bracket 0 n square bracket, so we're talking about a player character, square bracket dollars z n square bracket, and dollars z is um, the number of the character that we're currently dealing with, square bracket dollars w n square bracket, well w is the number of the skill, if that particular uh, slot in the SK array is equal to 1, that's what equals equals means, is equal to, it means is equal to, if that's equal to 1, then we set x equal to x plus this ampersand hash 1, 3, which is a, um, a line break or a carriage return, plus sn, or, or dollars sn square bracket dollars w n square bracket, in other words, the, the w th uh, skill name in the in the SN array, which has the, which just lists the names of the skills. So if a character has like all three skills, it'll 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 list all three of them. If it has none, it'll it just won't list anything after the after that damage. So that's how we display. Um, that's how we display uh, the um, um, the 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 text that tells us that a character has a particular skill. How do we actually code it? How do we make running away work? Um, well, we do this, and this is going to be different for each special ability because they all do different things and work in different ways. Um, obviously, setting them up and, and displaying them is going to be the same, but actually doing the mechanics is going to be different for each one. So um, here's what we do. This is a bit of a mistake. This this would probably be better off down here, by the way. But anyway, just note that that's a that was just a mistake of mine. Um, it still works as is. It's just a sort of bit a bit inelegant. Um, so we set z equal to zero, and z will either stay as zero or it will become the num a number corresponding to one of the player characters. So we have a for loop for y equals 1, dollars y is less than or equal to dollars c, which is the number of player characters, y plus plus. So we're going to go through every player character. If dollars h square bracket 0 n square bracket, square bracket dollars y n square bracket is over 0, well h is the array that deals with current hit points. So if h 0 dollars y is over 0, it means if player character number y is still alive, and if dollars sk square bracket zero n square bracket square bracket dollars y n square bracket square bracket two n square bracket is equal to one. In other words, if player character because it's a zero, if player character number y has skill number two. So in other words, if player character number y is still alive and has skill number two, then do whatever's before this slash if, which in this case is set $z equal to $y. And then we end the for loop. So $z will be the number of, uh, it'll be zero if no character has smoke bombs. If one character has smoke bombs, it'll be the number of that character. And if, sorry, if, uh, has smoke bombs and is alive. Um, and if more than one character has smoke bombs, it'll just be the higher number um, of the of the numbers of of those characters that are alive and have smoke bombs. And then we make a decision based on if z is equal to zero or equal to anything else. If z is equal to zero, which means no one has any smoke bombs, then we do all the things that we had been doing before we added this code. This is the sort of default behaviour. Set dollars AT to one, set dollars DE to zero. In other words, the monsters are the attackers and the player characters the defenders. Set F equal to one. Include find first attacker, which means find the 
um, whichever monster is going to attack first, usually monster number one, but if monster number one is dead, then it'll be number two, unless number two is dead, dead, and so on. And then go to enemy, enemy being the page where um, once we've decided which monster is getting the first attack, um, it's where they the, the game decides which player character they're going to attack. So in other words, if no one has smoke bombs, then we have the normal um, the normal round of being attacked before we can get away. Else, if Z is anything other than zero, if there is a character with smoke bombs who's alive, we set $O equal to one, $O being a flag that indicates that the combat is over. We set $M, the message that will be printed, equal to $N, $N square bracket, $Z, N square bracket. In other words, the name of the Z character, and because Z doesn't equal, Z is not equal to zero, Z is now going to be equal to whichever character has the smoke bombs, and then plus the text uh, space throws a smoke bomb and you flee the fight. So it'll say, in this case, because she is brave is the one that has smoke bombs, it'll give you the message, she is brave, throws a smoke bomb, and you flee the fight. Um, if you decided to flee partway through the combat and she is brave was dead, then it wouldn't find any character that meets those those qualifications, and so therefore you'd have to suffer the um, the whole uh, round of being attacked. So I do want to say one more thing about this um, about this particular power, um, and that is, you are probably going if you use it or something like it, you're probably going to want to put some sort of limit on it. As it is set up here, you can just use it each time to get away from each um, combat. And you probably would want to have um, some sort of limit on its use. So perhaps you might say that um, characters start with three smoke bombs. And so instead of setting, you might set uh, the relevant, sorry, let me find it. Um, when we're setting up the relevant skill, instead of setting it to one, you might set it to three, and then um, instead of having this one equal to one, you'd have if that one is over zero, and then when it's used, you might have something here which reduces that, um, that slot in SK by one. So in other words, the character has three smoke bombs, but e and each time they use that skill, then that's one less that they have. Um, or you might say that they can buy any number of smoke bombs, but it, you know they're quite expensive, or you know, or something. Um, because of course, if you're able to just not have any fight that you don't want to have um, in most games of this type, that's probably going to be a very big advantage. Probably actually a bigger advantage than you um, than you want it to be. So. Um, you, you probably, if you want to use this, you probably want to set up some sort of limit on it. Um, but I haven't done that. As usual, I set up the most sort of basic version of the of the system, um, and then you can the one that's sort of going to be relevant to the most people. And then, in terms of what you want to do, you, you're going to want to make you know changes to that to fit it to your idea of how the game system is going to work. Um, so, in videos to come, we'll deal with other ideas. For, um, for special abilities, um, including um, abilities that monsters can have. Um, but I hope that what I did today was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.